Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. More importantly, staying safe. Some pretty crazy weather has been ongoing today. You know, we've had the tornado threat across the south, but what's wild is areas like Illinois uh, have ongoing tornado warnings as I speak right now. And there's been some pretty photogenic tornadoes in some of the um, uh, plain areas of Illinois, some of the flatter areas is what I'm trying to say. And I tell you what, on Twitter, it's wild. It's, I wouldn't call it a tornado outbreak, but there is a lot of reports of some weaker tornadoes and visibly I mean they looks like something you would see out in the plains but uh, hopefully you folks are staying safe out there certainly has been a severe weather event that's been definitely uh, kind of dominated on the northern side of the risk area if you will which kind of contradicts what I was mentioning over the last two videos of how a lot of times that southern area is what uh, sometimes really materializes but not always and this has been the case today where it hasn't but Hope you folks are staying safe. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk at the very beginning about the risk for severe storms tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow. And then obviously in tomorrow's video, we'll give you a breakdown on how tomorrow can unfold for severe weather. We're going to have ongoing severe weather throughout the night. I'm not anticipating anything too crazy, but there is going to be some severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. So stay safe out there and stay aware and have a way to get alerts while you're sleeping. Uh, but... 95% of this video is going to be for you winter weather fans. I'm not saying I'm necessarily going to give you great news, but there is hope. The Some things I'm starting to see that maybe uh, there could be some uh, bones thrown for some areas along the eastern U.S. that we could have a storm signal. Something brewing. It's nothing to really put a stamp on and say it's going to happen, but... We're starting to get in that stage where we start to eyeball kind of a storm signal, maybe multiple storm signals. So we're going to talk about that in this video and kind of lead up to that. But if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if uh, you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments so I can pray over it. And I promise you, other people in the comments will pray over it also so let's get rolling here let's like i said talk about what could happen tomorrow we're not going to talk on much on what's going on right now there's a lot of great people who go live out there who is keeping a lot of folks covered uh they're getting affected by some severe weather it looks like a big area of storms about to enter my state here in south carolina it's going to be a rainy and stormy night that's for sure which I, I like i think a lot of people can like a rainy night but certainly when you have severe weather overnight you don't want to see that but that's not going to be the case for everybody, but will be the case for some. But the severe weather threat for tomorrow, you have a marginal risk that extends all the way up to uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Southeast Virginia. This includes the entire state of South Carolina. I would say about 75% of the state of North Carolina. But you really are eyeballing this area right here that has a slight risk of severe storms down here. There is going to be a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location. But I'm telling you, just like it was yesterday and just had like it's been today, that northern area of the risk area has been really materializing and uh, and there's been some definite vi validation of some tornadoes out here on the northern extent of these risk areas. So what I'm trying to say is if you're up here in the 2% risk area, please be weather aware because it's looking like it's going to be more so a line of storms that works through the Carolinas tomorrow and areas of Virginia, but you could have some spin-ups along this line, which can be just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than like isolated supercells because a lot of times... Uh, these line of storms are moving very quickly. So please be weather aware tomorrow, even in the morning. This is going to be going on in the morning. You got a 15% risk of damaging winds. That's winds pushing 50 knots or higher, around 55 to 60 miles per hour within 25 miles of any given location. So please be careful. Uh, how these storms can develop into tomorrow morning, into the overnight hours, you'll have storms. Storms will be going through areas of central Georgia. More storms will develop back in Mississippi and move through Alabama. And then areas of uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. I mean, this is 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, you still got storms from southeast Mississippi all the way to South Carolina. More rain for Georgia. You guys have had a lot of rain and rumbles of thunder and some storms this afternoon. It will continue throughout the overnight hours and you'll be waking up to it. And then finally, the grand finale of it all, which might not necessarily be the worst, but you're going to have just one consolidated line that really gets going. And this could be affecting areas like Atlanta, moving into Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, as we're getting into tomorrow morning. And then this, as we're getting into the later morning hours and then around lunchtime, this will likely be 
draped across all the way from the panhandle of Florida all the way up to southern areas of Virginia. More just a widespread rain in West Virginia and Virginia. And you just got to watch out for an isolated tornado threat, especially down here in, near the Big Bend areas of Florida and the panhandle of Florida where you could have a lot more thermodynamics, more high-end moisture at the surface, dew points, and uh, these cape levels will be much higher down here in support of a tornado or two. So please be aware down here, Tallahassee, watch out, the Big Bend areas of Florida, even um, Jacksonville. And then this will move off the eastern seaboard and we will finally be done with these severe storms as we move into tomorrow night. So let's switch gears and let's talk about the weather. So what's going to happen as we get deeper into January? It is what, January 3rd right now? Uh, Historically, the coldest month of the year on average, uh, history tells us. Uh, are we going to have any cold weather coming? Well, the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, which takes us through the 9th through the 13th. Check this out. The entire lower 48 has at least a chance to see above average temperatures. Nobody has a chance to see below average temperatures. But for remember, for a lot of these folks, above average temperatures um, compared to your average temperature that particular time of the year, this being January, it's still cold enough to see snow. So even though you see a lot of red up here, which means, you know, uh, you got a 50 to 60 percent or 60 to 70 percent chance to see above average temperatures. That doesn't mean it's just going to rain. Um, you know, for certain areas, you know, this still means snow. But in general, it's looking like it's going to be warm. Then you go to the 8 to 4, eight to 14 day temperature outlook. You got, you know, near normal conditions for some of the southeast, especially bordering the immediate southeast coastline. But above average temperatures in general, still dominating the entire low of 48, especially the central U.S. You just kind of got a weird flow. And we're about to talk about that here. So and this takes us through about mid-January. Remember. A lot of people are wanting to write off winter. You know, they're they're screaming La Nina, which normally, in typical La Nina winters, normally February is non-existent when it comes to winter weather. Cold. Normally, the southeast ridge dominates, and pretty much winter ends at the end of January in La Nina winters. But I I always say this. This is why I do not create winter weather forecast like three months before winter actually starts. I don't think we know enough about what's happened in the history that we've actually written down enough to really forecast weather a month out or even two months out or a whole entire season out. You know, I just don't. I don't. And I'm just not for you to for me to tell for to tell me that let's go on and just throw the entire month of like February out and say that it's basically not going to happen. I'm just not going to do that. Sure, La Nina normally symbolizes the dominant southeast ridge, which means warmer than average temperatures in general across the eastern and even parts of the central U.S. But I'm not ready to throw out an entire month of winter just because of what La Nina historically says. We got to see what actually happens. So, But January, a lot of people are thinking that, hey, if we want to save this winter, we got to have something to happen in January. And a lot of people are pointing to, pointing to the second half of January. But I'm seeing a storm signal right at the mid-month time frame, maybe around the 10th to 11th to 12th. And we're going to get to that here in a second. I'm kind of rambling here. But this is the system that's been plaguing the country this week already. This will continue to move, um, you know, eventually get off the coast of the Northeast US. And then there's a little short wave, a little bit of a kind of a very small piece of energy uh, that flies across the Ohio Valley. This could create some snow, some light snow accumulations are possible in the Ohio Vi Valley this weekend. We're gonna talk about that individual event and talk about what the GFS and the European is showing. I know you're not seeing it here, but there is. There's a piece of energy flying across the Ohio Valley. After that, what happens? I know you see a lot of red on your map. That is ridging. Think of that as ridging and think of that as above average temperatures. Uh, when you start to see the blue, that's either troughing a cold front or either a low pressure. So as we're moving here in time, notice the blue that creeps in. To me, that begins to symbolize a storm system developing somewhere off the coast of the southeast. Uh, that's not a trough necessarily, but some kind of low pressure developing. And, and granted, look how far out we are. We're at January 11th. 192 hours out. That is seven and a half, eight days out. That's an unreliable time frame. But the ensembles are honking their horn at this for someone along the eastern U.S. I'm not saying the southeast is going to get a snowstorm. I'm saying that somewhere along the southeast, or the I'm sorry, the eastern U.S., 
could have something uh, to work with and really to talk about here in the next couple of days. We got to watch. But this big blue here you're seeing, you're seeing here that looks really color, that looks really pretty for you winter weather fans, including me. That is a low pressure signal about some kind of coastal low off the co off the coast of the um, of the eastern U.S. So what does this do? We don't know, but we know that there could be some kind of low pressure with enough. When I say marginal, I mean marginal marginal cold air nearby that where maybe the favored climate regions could pick up some snow i'm not saying i'm not going to just throw out the entire southeast off the table here but what i'm telling you here is with no real cold air source from the north which we really don't unless we can get some kind of vortex that really gets going here in southeast canada that funnels in some cold air like some cold air damming or something like that some kind of high pressure it's just looking like a very marginal setup, but we don't know all the details. All we can talk about is a storm signal here. And then after that, maybe another storm signal, uh, but this is getting about 10 days out. So as far as temperatures, and we'll briefly go over this, I can tell you, you know, it's going to be generally above average. The oranges and reds you see, that is above average temperatures, you know, five to 10 degrees above average. It got into the low 70s here in my neck of the woods here in South Carolina today. Um, but it's going to continue. If you're wondering what date we're at, January 10th, we're continuing to move forward. And look at just the warmer colors. That symbolizes above average temperatures. And they dominate the entire U.S. And I know a lot of people are moaning and groaning who are winter weather fans. But you you, you, you can still get a winter storm. And, and only because it's January. We're getting into mid-January. And we're getting to the time of the year where it's the coldest um time of the year for almost everybody especially in the eastern u.s mid to late january is your coldest time of the year i'm not saying it's necessarily your snowiest time of the year but it's your coldest time of the year on average so you don't need a lot of cold air to work with and sometimes you know if we look back and we and we talk about what happened in, in december you know two weeks ago and around christmas you know we had the big shot of cold air but it was too amplified we had too much of a shot of cold air and it suppressed all of our storm systems to the south. A lot of times we need we need, for something in the south to work at work work um to work with, a lot of times we need that winter storm in the 30s or upper 20s. You don't need you're not going to get something in the south or something and with temperatures in the teens, even the Ohio Valley, you typically get your winter storms in the 20s. So, you need more marginal cold air meaning it's just barely cold enough for winter weather. So let's talk about this little piece of energy that could fly across the Ohio Valley this weekend. We're starting around Friday morning, which is about three days from now, January 6th. And here it comes. We're getting into Saturday morning. The GFS is really aggressive with this. Has an area of moderate to heavy snow breaking out. It's just cold enough. Remember I was just mentioning marginal. It's literally just cold enough for some heavy wet snow and areas of uh, Indiana, Southern Ohio, and then areas of West Virginia. It doesn't last long, but it, getting into Saturday afternoon, it's still snowing in these areas. And uh, it wants to bring snow all the way to Northern VA, Northern West Virginia, even Southern areas of Pennsylvania, then it clears out. So that's a nice event, right? Well, if you look at the European for the same system, uh, here we go, getting into Saturday morning. Well, it's there's not a lot of moisture moving north, right? The cold air is there. There's enough cold air, but it really has the system a little bit more suppressed, and it has a little bit of a rain snow mix in southern Indy. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, southern Indiana. A little bit of a rain snow mix here in uh, north central Missouri. A little bit of snow showing up in the mountains of Virginia as we're getting into Saturday about midday. And uh, yeah, it's just not much of an event here. And you see splotches of blue in here, but the GFS is much colder with the system. So this is some big disagreements with a system that's only about three to four days away. Massive disagreement, in my opinion, from the European and the GFS. So if you're in the Ohio Valley waiting for snow, you're pulling for the more snowier scenario, which is the GFS. But we kind of have to watch and see where these where this meets in the middle. Will the European win or the GFS? You always got to nod your head to the European in a lot of cases because on average, historically, it wins, but we got to see what happens. But, you know, we're getting into Saturday evening. Just looks like a rain-snow mix down here and uh, no real big area of snow really developing anywhere. Getting into Sunday morning, and uh, it's pretty much it besides some sleet, maybe freezing rain still falling Sunday morning in areas of Illinois and Indiana. But moving forward, you look at the blend of all models with this system. 
and it blends, like I said, all models, shows a few inches of snow, maybe an inch to maybe about a one to three inch snowfall event, anywhere from Chicago through Indianapolis, uh, through Dayton, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, all the way to Pittsburgh, maybe one to two inches of snow, a, a very light event, snow falling at very marginal temperatures. So we have to see how this works out. We're not sure how it's going to work out. I think we'll know a lot more 24 hours from now. But really, this isn't the big storm. The one that we're going to talk about here is, is I can't say it's a big storm yet, but it's a signal. So let's take a look at the European first. And we're going to get past this system that we just talked about. First off, here comes another system that's kind of a, an attachment of the first system. And uh, here it comes. We're getting into the morning of the 9th. If you're confused about the time frame, we're right here. Monday morning, here comes some moisture. It's flirting around with very marginal cold air. Not a lot of cold air to work with, even pretty far north. This moves on off. We're done with that. And a, a piece of the northern stream drops down. Do we get some kind of attachment? We do. Big time low pressure develops well off the eastern seaboard but it's a miss and remember how far we are out right here 210 hours out we are past seven to eight days out so it's very unreliable time frame but there's been a consistent signal that there's some kind of storm signal right here but this misses right it's very close but it misses um if we were to back this up the run last night it does not miss it slams i mean slams the i-95 corridor basically from southern new jersey all the way up to boston um, even further inland, basically all of southern New England with a pretty huge, and uh, I mean, I would say this is probably a blizzard if, you know, this one model run was to, was to actually happen. But that is a substantial difference, right? This really got all the Northeast folks, winter weather fans, really happy when they saw this last night. But this is a big system if something like that was to happen. But as you can tell, you look at the, the latest run, it's, it's there. The storm is there, but it's well off the coast. So you look at the GFS, that and that's the signal we're watching. Look at the GFS, same kind of deal. Throw some moisture after this, uh, after, after this Ohio Valley system moves through. Here comes some moisture. The GFS is more colder with this first um, kind of batch of moisture right here. We're getting into Monday morning. This wants to throw snow into Pennsylvania when the European just has rain. And it uh, gets very close to the interior areas of uh, the northeast. Uh, in fact, it is snowing. gets very close to the I-95 corridor. That moves out. Then we start to get into that 10th to 11 time frame. And here comes that storm system. It's bubbling up here, moving over Florida. We're getting into the morning of the 11th. And look what the GFS does. Deep into very intense low pressure. Has snow overspreading the eastern Carolinas. Now, I know you folks in the Carolinas who are watching this are already opening your eyes wide and saying... Oh, man, it looks like we're going to get snow in uh, mid-January, please. It's one model run. I can almost guarantee you that this will not be showing snow in South Carolina, North Carolina on the next run. Just focus on the storm signal, guys. Focus on the storm signal. Develops a pretty intense low pressure, and uh, but it never really starts to go up the eastern seaboard. It just heads on out the sea. So there's enough cold air up here in the northeast, but this does not head north. It just heads on out, and there you go. See you later and uh, does not affect the northeast so this is the european ensembles and basically this is an ensemble run trying to figure out all 50 basically this puts together 50 different runs and puts them in a model run so we talk about this a lot in the tropics so you're going to see a bunch of l's right into here but that doesn't mean we have like 50 different storm systems it's basically all these ensemble runs put together in one map so it basically gives us a signal of is there going to be a low pressure. Look at all these little L's coming up right here. That tells us that there's a signal that there's going to be some kind of storm system. This shows, you know, 1, 2, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, as we're getting into the middle of the night, next Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So a lot of, a lot of low pressures. And then you go to the next frame of Wednesday morning of the 11th. You got some sub 1000 millibar low pressures developing off the coast of the eastern u.s and there's going to be enough cold air in some of these areas that if this was to happen it would be snow so you go to the next frame and this is a solid signal for some kind of low pressure but look how scattered the l's are like i said this doesn't mean there's going to be multiple storm systems this is an ensemble run so it tries to 
tell you where all the ensembles are. I'm trying to ex the best way to explain this without mashing up my words, but this is just a storm signal that you're looking at. And it's just putting all these L's on one map. We're getting into next Wednesday evening of the 12th. And uh, like I said, strong storm signal. But this doesn't really keep riding up the northeast. This starts to head on out to sea. And a lot of these L's never really get close. The storm signal never really gets super close to the northeast. But that is a strong signal for some kind of stronger storm off the coast of the eastern U.S. sometime next week. The... Uh, GEFS Ensembles, which makes up less members, but it still does the same thing. Um, same kind of deal. Shows a low pressure, a signal for a storm signal as we're getting into the 10th to 11th time frame off the coast of the eastern U.S., and there it is. Um, so you got a pretty stout signal. Now, if you look at the Ensembles as far as snowfall with the European Ensembles, this takes us about all the way through the morning of the 16th, which probably is too far out. But you got a signal in the northeast. You even got a signal all the way into Virginia, into the areas of the coastal plains in North Carolina. So this is a sign that winter's going to make a return, I think, in my opinion. And uh, we got to see how much this increases over the next, I would say, four to five days. The GEFS ensembles, which we got to go on out here in time. Um, you know, we go about 11 days out. And this is a pretty solid signal for interior areas in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Uh, even a pretty decent signal for New York City and Boston. And you got a little bit of a signal that comes all the way down into the Carolinas, but very weak as, as expected. Um, so I really think there's going to be some kind of storm system, I, I think, but around the 10th to 12th time frame. Now, does it only affect the Southeast and gives us a lot of rain, cold rain, and maybe some mountain snow? Who knows? Um, there, there's a chance there might not be a storm system. Does the storm system, uh, is it able to take a path up the eastern seaboard to deliver the northeast a big snowstorm or the mid-Atlantic? It's possible. And these marginal setups is when, when there's not a lot of cold air to work with, sometimes this is when you get the big storms, especially for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So we have to watch this. Winter isn't over, guys. It's not. Um, normally, I make a call the last day of February, if I'm not seeing anything over the next two weeks, if I think winter is done or not. And some people will wait even longer, especially if we live further north. But I'm not a big fan of March snow. So typically when you get to the last day of February, in my personal opinion, I start to just get over winter, especially if I already saw snow. I'm happy. I got to see my snow like this past spring. I was very happy. You know, I got to see my two and a half inches of snow here in Lexington, South Carolina. And I was okay with moving on to spring with that. But um, let's see what happens. We'll continue to try to figure this out and I'm not going to hound this to death, but of course we'll continue to kind of do what we were, what we did leading up to the Christmas Arctic front and the system as we'll gradually talk about it and to the point where we actually have something to really, really latch onto. But that's all I got guys. Thank y'all for watching. God bless all y'all and I'll have you an update in the morning.